Well, well good afternoon, time. everybody. Uh, if, if it wasn't for all the masks that, that I'm seeing on everybody's face, with the sun shining and 50 degree plus weather, and we're together, I'd swear we just woke up from a bad nightmare. <laughs> you know, B-movie at that of, of COVID disease. Come on in. But uh, here we are. It is 2021, and you know, I'm, I'm going to do something for Joel as well. You know, Joel is the sponsor here, and you know, Joel has been a long-term client of mine. And what I'm going to suggest to you is the reason he sponsored my presentation today is because we are in a line with what, uh, what we do in our businesses. And, and specifically, Joel, the one thing that Joel wanted everybody to know about today is that now is the perfect time to take a look at your financial portfolios and all of you probably have an advisor and all of you have life insurance and all of you are well situated but if you haven't looked at it if you haven't had your advisor take a look at it and talk to you about it joel suggests that you reach out to them and make that happen do it as early in 2021 as possible all right because of some changes and set your goals to make sure you're still working towards your goals which is exactly what we're going to be talking about today all right now <clears throat> let me let me ask what is going to seem to be a very silly question all right but who in here has set a goal just raise a hand okay most of us have set a goal all right give me an example of a goal that you have set for yourself just shout it out no pop 30 days no soda for 30 days all right no pop no soda for 30 days all right double our business in two years say that one more time we're going to double our business in two years double your business wow. in two years okay good Blaine? uh find our own space for lisa it's only team center we want our own space all right find space for prodeo okay mm -hmm. perfect all right one more another goal Retention rate um, in the chamber at 88%. Okay, good. Retention rate with the chamber at 88%. Now, let me ask you, these goals that you've shared, these sound like they are current goals, all right? But we set goals in the past, right? Have we reached our goals in the past? Some. Some, okay. Some we didn't, which is the typical response. The question that I often ask is, though, why didn't we reach our goal? Or, better yet, putting it in the proactive, why did you achieve your goal? And you'd be surprised at some of the answers that you hear. What, what do you think the reasons would be that you achieved your goals? Lisa? Uh, several years ago, I set a goal to um, complete the, you know, the um, Hospital Hill Half Marathon. Mm -hmm. And I trained for it, and I, I had a plan, and I trained every day, cross-training, and I stuck to this plan, and next thing you know, I was at Hospital Hill, and I did it two years ago. Okay, here's the key words I heard her say. She had a plan, she trained, and she stayed with it. Okay, good, good. How about somebody bold enough, brave enough to share a goal they didn't achieve? Joey. Uh, last year I had a, a goal of getting to my next level of my REMAX goal that where they give an award. Yeah. And I missed that by just a little bit, but some of the things that I couldn't control caused some of that. Some of it was different things that I was adjusting and shifting on the fly. So, mm -hmm. so that was pretty fresh, but um, even with that, I'm, I feel pretty good about what I did last year, okay. despite what happened. Okay. So, uh, I think it's just about fine-tuning things and, and doing a little bit smarter than we go. Okay, he got close. He didn't quite get to where he wanted to be, but he's fine-tuning, all right? He's already assessed why he didn't get there and, and making adjustments going forward. Now, as we set goals, there, we're expecting an outcome, correct? That's why we set a goal. We're, we're reaching for an outcome. But what are the consequences of setting a goal and achieving it, or setting a goal and not achieving it? 
Was that a hand up? No? <laughs> well, I think when you achieve your goal, you have satisfaction. It gets, it's, it's a good experience. You feel good about yourself. But when you don't, you feel defeated. I, I think of, you know, a lot of my goals in the past have been weight goals mm -hmm. to try to either lose weight or maintain weight or whatever. And, um, you know, when you meet those goals, I lost 20 pounds before my daughter's wedding, my first daughter's wedding, and I felt really, really good about that, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but, you know, other times I've tried and I haven't. And, you know, you just feel defeated, don't be whatever you want to call it. <laughs> right, right. But the, the key one there that I'm going to call out, mm -hmm. and thank you for sharing that, Kim, mm -hmm. is failure. Mm -hmm. All right? The consequences of not reaching our goal is we feel failure. So, first of all, let's take a stab at this, if this is going to work. There we go. What are goals? Your definition. How would you define a goal? What is it? Something you're trying to achieve. Something that you try to achieve. Measurable. Something that's measurable. I heard somebody. For me, it's a foundation of building my business. It's that next building block. If I set this goal, then I know I can achieve this next one. So right now, I feel like my goals are very, um, they're very much building blocks mm -hmm. to where, if, okay, if I reach goal number one, then that's going to put me in a position to reach goal number two. Okay. But if I'm not reaching goal number one, that's going to set goal number two back. Because if I'm not making my numbers, then I don't need to hire an area manager. Okay. And I don't need to grow my employees. So my goals are building blocks. Okay, building blocks. And, and the, what, the picture that came to my mind, I'm a very visual person with dominoes. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. What else? What are goals? Stretch. Stretch? Like stretch goals. For okay. Me. Something that's supposed to stretch your, 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 your horizon, all right? So, online dictionary. Whoever knew that there really was such a thing as an <laughs> online dictionary? <laughs> but the object of a person's ambition or effort, an aim or desired result. Now, the one that I really like, and I, I almost hesitate to, to name my source here because it's Wikipedia, but, <laughs> all right? An idea of the future or desired result that a person or a group of people envision, plan, and commit to achieve. Envision, plan, and commit to achieve. Now, that is the key essence of what a goal is. And if, if I told you to go survey 100 people at Independence Mall. First, I'd have to issue body armor, okay? <laughs> but then if we did that survey, what we would discover statistically is when you ask the first question of those 100 people, do you have goals? All 100 would say, yes, they have goals. Statistically, when you ask the second question, have they taken the time to write down their goals? Just write down their goals. 90 people of those 100 will tell you no. 10% will have actually taken the time to write down what their goals are. And then when you ask the third question, have you written a plan that's going to uh, uh, highlight what you need to do, the activities you need to, uh, need to follow in order to achieve that goal? Well, we'd have to go ask a whole lot more people before we would get anybody to say yes, certainly within that group of 100, because statistically, it's .001 that have actually taken the time to not just write down a goal, but to build a plan that will help them achieve these goals. Now, why don't we do these things? Sometimes... It's simply because we don't know how to do it. Other times it's because we don't know where to start. Sometimes we think our goal really isn't that big of a deal. I mean, let's face it, this is the week. Coming up this Friday is the resolution, the day of resolution death. January the 15th <laughs> is when most resolutions have died. Okay? <laughs> 
So it's no big deal. But here's the real reason. Goals are scary. They're risky. They take work. You have to put effort forth. And here, you said it earlier, you expose yourself to failure. And none of us want to fail. In fact, that is one of the biggest fears that everyone has is the fear of failure. And that is also the largest reason that we don't take the time to actually work on goals. Now, I do an exercise. I, I do this, this goal setting. It takes, takes us, we work at different times over three months with my clients that we're working on this. But this is one of the exercises that I do. It's the lifeline. And on this lifeline, I, I ask them to just write their, the, the year they were born. And then, what year do you think you're going to die? Be generous. All right? Be kind to yourself. But what year do you think you're going to die? And then when I ask them, now take a T and put it somewhere on this line. Where are you on your lifeline between when you were born and when you're going to die? That's today. That's where you are. And then the other one, John, you guys would love this. I, mean, I do love this. I'm writing this down. You'd love this, all right? I write an R. I ask them to write an R. R is going to represent when they can retire. Not when they will quit working, but when they can retire. And write it there. And then we draw a little squiggly line to the left of today because today, everything that's be to the left of today, that's experience. We can't do anything about it. And, a, and a, a worn out phrase, today is the first day of the rest of your life, is exactly the phrase. But here's the difference, or the, here's the important thing, between where your T lies and your R lies, that's the time you've got to spend preparing working on it because you want to have fun in retirement, right? Not that you're going to quit, not that you're going to quit working even, all right? But between today and your R, wherever you are on this line, and let me take it down to even more poignant. Today is January the 12th, 2021. Think about 10 years from today. January the 12th, 2031, how old will you be? Well, you'll be 10 years older, okay? I can answer that one for you. But what will be going on in your life in 10 years? Where will you be working? What kind of position will you have? Will you be retired? If so, what will you be doing? What will your income be at that point in time? What will your responsibilities be at that point in time? Now, as you're thinking about that, look back to today. What have you accomplished in those 10 years? What are you the most proud of? What did you get the most enjoyment from what was it that you wish you would have gotten done? We repeat that. Are we thinking 10 years from now? Yes. 10 Any years from questions? now, as you're looking back to today, what is it that you're the most proud of? What have you accomplished? What did you have the most fun doing? And what is it that you didn't accomplish? Now, I put on all the tables face down, a little exercise that I'm gonna ask you to do. It's called the Synergy Wheel. Now on this Synergy Wheel, John was reminding me that he, he was in this the last time I did this two or three years ago. He says, you used this wheel last time. And I'm like, okay, just don't say anything to us. <laughs> right? You point the answers, all right? Way better presentation this time. But here's, here's, thank you. Here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. On the synergy wheel, there are eight top
toppings that are around that, that, the outer edge of that wheel. Those represent the eight areas of your life. Now, you may call them different things, but just for our discussion today, those are the eight general areas of your life. Now, if you were to score yourself in each of those areas, what I would ask you to do is closest to the hub, where it says Sandler Training, that's one. And closest to the outer rim of that wheel is 10. Take one minute and rate yourself in those eight different areas where you think you are in each of those areas of your life. One being the closest to the hub, 10 being the farthest out. And give yourself a score. We're rating this against what? Our ideal? About where you think you are. Yeah, it would be your ideal. And 10 is our ideal? 10 is you're perfect, you're great, can't get any better today. Tomorrow you might be able to, but... Okay, so most of you have in, have either circled or you've colored in the dot or whatever. you. Now, draw a line between the dots for me. As you go around the wheel, draw a line from one spoke to the next spoke. Not very round. <laughs> mm. It won't travel well. <laughs> It'd be kind of bump, bumpy, wouldn't it? As you look at that, that is the question. So how well-rounded are you in your view? From your perspective, how well-rounded are you? Do you see some flat spots on your, on your wheel? Do you see some spikes? And do you see some deep valleys? Now, as we look at these eight areas of, of our life, you know, you've got the single word. I've, I've expanded it to kind of talk a little bit more about what the area is. Well, why do you think we call this the synergy wheel? Okay. It goes around and it keeps rolling and it keeps moving. Good. Why else? One affects the other. What do you mean by that, John? I mean, our, our relationships affect our... our Social, our um, health affects um, our career. I mean, I think they, they all affect each other in one way or another. Okay. Exactly what John says. They are interdependent on each other to that point. Okay. One, you can't focus on one while neglecting another because what happens? If I focus on my career, what am I sacrificing? What am I overlooking? What am I missing? I've been there, all right? You, you heard Matt say that I've had 20 years as a football coach. It's actually closer to 25 now. But I was a head coach at the college level when I was 29. I had to get out of college coaching. I knew that was my calling in life. That's where I, I knew I was supposed to be. But I had to get out of college coaching if I wanted to stay married to a woman that I am still married to today. Because my life was not well-rounded. It was about football. And everything else was very flat on my wheel. All right? And to be real honest with you, I wasn't that good of a head coach, at least by the record, you know? I'm a, I'm a really good football coach, but I wasn't ready at 29 to be a head coach at college because I didn't understand the politics that was involved with all that. I knew X's and O's. I had that one down. Let's go play. But that isn't what head coaching is all about. But my life wasn't well-rounded. I had to learn the hard way. All right? And I had to get out of football. I had to leave co the college level specifically. And I've been coaching at least Summit West now for the last 12 years, 13 years now. All right? And love it. But I've got my, my life in balance, too. All right? 
my wheel is not perfectly round. I'm not going to stand up here and try to try to sell you that. I'm not. I've still got high spots and low spots, and I've got flat spots too. You know, we're still working on it. We're we're all a work in progress. But the reality is, as we take a look at this, this is where we're going to begin, because. If you know anything about me or you have any familiarity with Sandler training, we're about processes, all right? And I'm a process kind of guy. So how do we do this? How do we get, how do we take this wheel that we've looked at that we admittedly know is not balanced the way that it needs to be, and how do we rebalance it? Well, we got to talk about the different types of goals that they that exist. Now, tangible and intangible, those are real easy. I want to buy a car. I want to buy a house. I want to take my family on a vacation. Those are tangible goals. Those intangible goals, I want to improve the relationship with my spouse. I want to de-stress. Talk to Robin Todd. <laughs> Shameless plug, don't worry. But those are intangibles because they're not something that we can feel or see or, or taste. I mean, certainly we feel the relationship, we feel the, the stress or the lack of stress, but it isn't tangible. It's not something we can hold in our hand. But we've got to have goals that are tangible and intangible also. We have to have long-term and short-term goals. Now, you will define what is a long-term goal in your world and what is a short-term. Typically, when I'm talking, if I'm talking a long-term goal, it's anything that take, will take more than 365 days. That's a long-term goal. A short-term goal is 365 days or less. But we have to have, have those, but we also have to understand how our monthly, daily, and weekly goals are going to feed into those short-term and long-term goals. We have to have dumb and smarter goals. Now, does anybody know what a dumb goal is? We got to have dumb goals. Every one of us have to have them. They have to be dream-inspired. They have to be unattainable. They have to be motivating and they have to be bold. And we have to be able to take those dumb goals and turn them into smarter goals. Everybody knows what those are, right? Specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, time-bound, enjoyable, and rewarding. We're going to talk about those more in a minute. But here's the unifying thing, that it doesn't matter what goal we're talking about, every goal that you have for you to really, for it to really be a goal, needs to have two components. One, it has to be connected to your why. It has to be why you get up in the morning and go doing what you're going to be doing. It has to be a driving motivational force for you to achieve it. Second thing that every one of these goals have to have, you have to be outside of your comfort zone. Because if you've achieved it already, it's not really a goal. You've already done it. Move the flag. Get uncomfortable. If you can be uncomfortable, then you have a chance of actually doing more than what you've done. Too many people are afraid to set a goal out there. All right? You know what? I did it, and I caught myself doing it, and I had to stop my myself doing it. I was talking with my coach, and I told him what I had done this year and where, where I was setting my goal for next year. And I, it was almost automatically coming out of my mouth is I was justifying why I really hadn't moved my goal for, you know, for next year. And I stopped and he started laughing. <laughs> he started laughing because he knew what I was doing. I said, okay, John, I caught myself and you caught me too. It's not dumb, is it? He says, no, it's not. So how are we going to get that? And so I had to move it up. I didn't hit the goal that I was shooting for this year, but next year's is higher than it was 
this year. All right? It has to scare you just a little bit. Because if it doesn't, you're not going to get outside your comfort zone. Now, all of this rah-rah, hoopla, how do we do this? Ten steps, real easy. All right? Ten steps. First of all, you're going to take that synergy wheel that you have in front of you, and we're going old school. You're going to pull out eight sheets of paper. Now, the neurological science behind writing out your goals versus typing up your goals on your phone or on your tablet or on your laptop, neurologically, the synapses that you are connecting in your brain are longer and stronger when you hand write it out than when you digitally try to do it. So we're going to pull out eight sheets of paper and we are going to put those headings that are on our synergy wheel at the top of those pages. One heading on each page. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at our synergy wheel and you're going to assess why you scored yourself at that point today. You're taking inventory. Where are you today? All right? Number two, right? Now we're going to begin to free flow write. On each of those pages, we are going to write out our goals. And they are going to begin with, I want. I, be very selfish, want. And then fill in the blank behind it. And you're not going to edit. You're not going to say, nope, that's too big. That's not, a, that, I'm not going to do that. If you think it, you will ink it. You write it out. You put it on this sheet of paper. And you do this with all eight sheets of paper under all eight categories. Now here's the reality. Some of us are going to struggle to come up with three under some of these categories. And some of us are going to write 27 under some of these categories. Because, man, they're just going to flow out of us. All right? But we're going to free flow right here, this exercise. And I'm going to suggest that you're going to have to set aside some time. I would recommend 30 minutes to even an hour per topic. Per topic and make sure that you're in a quiet area so you can really be there with you and if it comes to your mind write it down and in that zone as you begin to write you will you will begin to flow even more and as it comes write it down now, once we have finished this writing exercise and we're satisfied with what we've put down under all eight of these areas of our life, the goals that we want to achieve, and remember, they're tangible, intangible, long-term, short-term, done, we're working on smarter later, all right? But then we are going to take a look at each category and we are going to prioritize not in the order that we wrote them, but in the order of importance. We're going to go from one to whatever. One being the most important to eight, to 12, to 27, however many you've got. We're going to prioritize them. We're not editing them. The prioritization sounds very easy, but it will be a little of a challenge as well. And you're only prioritizing it within that category. Okay? And then from that prioritized eight lists, we're going to make a master list. And what's going to show up on our master list are the top three goals in each of our eight areas. So we're going to wind up with one sheet of paper, handwritten, again, all right, on 24 lines, because I know that there used to be 26 lines on a page of notebook paper, all right? 
So we should be just fine getting all 24 of our goals on one sheet of paper. And then we're going to prioritize that master list. And out of that master list, what we're going to look for is the number one, or the top eight, I should say, the top eight of those 24 goals. And I'm going to suggest it never works quite this nicely. I'm going to suggest that you have one goal in, in all eight categories. I realize that sometimes our priorities aren't aligned that way which has been a challenge for you. But what are your eight top goals? Now here's where it becomes really hard and can be the biggest challenge. Because now we're going to take these free flow written goals, dumb, challenging, unrealistic, motivational and goal, uh, a bowl and put them, turn them into smarter goals. We have to make sure that we are very specific about the goal. If, it, if you're going to lose weight, that's not your goal. I'm going to lose 30 pounds. That is your goal, but how are we going to manage that? Are you going to do 10 pounds at a time? Are they going to be your milestones, as you were talking about with your business? Are we going to look at the whole 30 pounds? If we're going to double our business in two years, what does that mean? What do we have to do? We have to be specific about doubling. What does that mean? Does that mean we're going to double the number of customers? Does that mean we're going to double the, number, the, the sales revenue? Does that going to mean we're going to double our profit? A lot of different questions about how we are measuring it, but being specific in order to measure it, we have to be specific about that. What does that mean? All right, then we have to decide how are we measuring this? What is our means of measure? Well, pounds and dollars are easy to measure. All right, but how do we measure a reduction in stress or a relationship with our children? That's your job to figure out how you are going to measure it. Because this is your goal. But we have to have ways of weighing it, counting it, measuring it, assessing it, so that we can see the progress that we are making. And sometimes it's, it's small progress. But we've got to be able to see how, what the movement is. So we have to be able to measure it. Actionable. We have to be able to put this into actionable steps that are going to fall into that monthly, daily, and weekly categories. You know, a lot of people set these long-term goals that they're going to buy this vacation home. Joey, you probably hear this all the time. This vacation home down at the lake or down in Florida. But what are they doing today that's going to get them to that point? Or what are they going to do this month that's going to get them to the point they need to be at the end of this year, even when it's 12 or 20 years away. Too many times we set those long-term goals, but we never have the actionable items or the action steps that we are going to do. These are the things that are going to tell us on a daily, on a weekly, and on a monthly basis the actions we must take to achieve this goal. Realistic. This is where we have to take that dumb goal and we have to make it realistic. All right? You can lose 30 pounds. You can lose 100 pounds. You can lose whatever. But we have to make it realistic as far as how many pounds are we going to be able to lose in a given time frame. Which is our next part of the SMART is the time element. So that... That, the R and the T kind of go together. Is it a realistic goal? Absolutely, it's a realistic goal. Every goal you write down can be realistic. But if you expect to do it in 30 days and lose 30 pounds, well, unless you're losing the body part, no, it isn't going to happen. All right? So we have to make that, that realistic piece of it understandable to us, but we have to put it in a time frame 
that gets there for us. You know, one of the biggest reasons we stumble on our goals and we accept a failure, and I, and, and I hope you heard the emphasis that I put on that because I, I love that word. Failure is a good word. It's not a bad word. But the reason we accept it as a failure is our timeline was off. We said we were going to do it in six months, or we said we were going to do it in six years, and it was actually an eight-year term goal. Because we either didn't put the right resources toward it, we didn't follow our plan, or lo and behold, there's this thing called COVID-19? I mean, seriously. You know, I... I mean, we were talking about our goals this year, and I said, and, you know, I've, I've got people that have been doing this with me for four years now. And, 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 you know, last year in December, COVID, really? We heard about something going on in China, but that's in China. That's not here. Who built a plan for 2020 that included COVID is going to hit us in March? We're going to shut down as of March the 13th. They're going to cancel the NCAA tournament? They're going to cancel baseball? Spring training? Really? Nobody saw something like that. There's, guess what? As we are goal planning, we cannot see over the horizon. We, we can analyze our metrics. We can measure and use past experience, but there's still an element of guessing in this. So the, I say that, not to give you an excuse, it is. It's a legitimate excuse, but it's usually the result of time. We didn't know COVID-19 was gonna happen, so it threw us off our goal track, all right? I've not, had, I've not talked to one person that said they hit all their goals in 2020. Well, if anybody tells you they hit all their goals, they didn't set them high enough, all right? Plain and simple. Enjoyable, that's the E part. If this goal isn't fun, we're not going to do it for very long. We're not going to hang around with it. Guess what? The human nature is we want to have some fun. We can work hard. We can grind. But eventually, we've got to get to the fun part. So make sure that it is enjoyable what you're going to do. If you hate doing something, don't do that. Figure out how to do it differently. Don't set yourself up for failure. Have some fun doing it. And then that last R, reward yourself. Give yourself credit for the milestones that you've achieved. Make them small rewards and make it a larger reward at the end. Now here's the piece that's not on the SMARTER goal. It's on the sheets that I hand out to my clients when we're filling out our SMARTER goals. Share your goal. Share your goal with the people involved. Share it with your accountability person. Sharing your goal with the people involved is critical. And here's why we don't write goals down, because we don't want people to know that we failed. One of the best success stories and one of the funniest ones that I've got is one of my clients decided he wanted to take his family to Disney World. But it was going to require that he actually had to make two more sales every month in order to have the money to take his family down there. Well, he built his smarter goal. He realized that he was going to have to make a few more phone calls, and it was going to require him being on the road a few more nights every month. But he shared that goal with his kids because then they understood that when dad was gone, he was getting them to the mouse house. And guess what? They held him accountable. He came in and he says, you know what the questions are when I come home? The kids are asking me now. He says, I said, no. He says, dad, did you get that deal closed? <laughs> dad, where are you on that goal? They, he hit the goal by the end of August. When it was a 12-month goal, he hit it by the end of August. Who do you think was the most excited, him or his kids? So when you share this with the people who are going to be involved, if you're going to lose weight, you know, your spouse is going to have to change how they eat too, probably. 
okay? Or they're going to have to cook differently, or you're going to have to cook differently for them and for you, okay? But my wife, anytime I'm going to lose weight, or she's going to lose weight, she cooks differently, but then she gives me twice as much. I'm like, <laughs> what's up with this? All right? Now, we can make 2021 our best year ever. But it takes effort, it takes work, it takes commitment. But the simple steps are, determine what your goals are. Write them down. Build the plan that, that doesn't just say, I'm going to do this, but talks about when and how and what you're going to do to achieve this goal. And then execute on that plan. Execute on it. Keep it in sight. Make sure it's in front of you. The, the final exercise that we do, that I do with my clients in December, is we build our vision boards. And I got this genius moment three years ago that what is the thing that we look at the most when we are sitting at our desk? Computer. What if... Our wallpaper on our computer is our vision board. Since doing that, I've had more people come back saying they've achieved goals because every time they boot their computer up, every time they open the computer up, there's their vision board. It's in front of them. Check in with yourself. I have my vision board on my, on my uh, computer. Of course, I've got my 2020 one still on my computer because I, I can't find my 2021 one in my files and to change it. But I also have my goals written out with the action steps on the inside of my planner. Yeah, I'm old school. I have a planner planning book, all right? But it's taped inside there. So every time I open my planner every day, I see those goals. When I open my journal, I have a printed copy in my journal as well so that I can look at my goals and assess and feel good about it. How many goals do you have? Do you have eight written out? Is there I have ten written out. <coughs> I have ten. With like daily action steps? Or yeah. Yes. All your daily routines now, routine. not everything is going to have a daily action. Sometimes it's a weekly or a monthly action. All right. But yes, it, I've got an action step, or steps, plural, for the goals, yeah. And here's the, be consistent, but be persistent also. Or I should say, consistent and, not but, and persistent. Consistently follow your plan but be persistent about following it. Don't give up on it. There's the other reason that people don't hit their goals is they give up on them. Now, they give up on them more times than not because it really wasn't connected to their why. I get a lot of people that will write out a goal because they think they should. They think they should put that kind of goal down. And well, we're making a vision board, so I better put that kind of picture on my vision board too. And then... They don't hit it. Well, it was because it wasn't connected to their why. It didn't motivate them. They didn't get excited about doing it. If you get up and you, you are excited about what you're doing and you're doing it intentionally, the activities every day, am I working toward my goal? And if I'm not, if it's something that, that's not getting me to my, my, one of my goals, why are you doing it? As business leaders, as business owners, how many times do we find ourselves involved in a meeting or in an activity that if we just stopped at that moment, looked in the mirror and said, yeah, this really isn't getting me anywhere toward where I need to be. I mean, if we were all brutally honest with ourselves, it happens to us every day. 
All right? If you're really good, it happens to you at least once or twice a week. It's not happening to you every day. That's what I mean when you're really good at it. All right? But are we being intentional about how we're spending our time? There's the other piece to that persistence and consistent. If, then if you select your goals, build a plan, execute your plan, and you're consistent and persistent, I can guarantee that you may not hit your goal. But you're going to achieve something. And you're going to achieve more than what you would have achieved had you never started the path. And that gets me right back to what Kim said earlier, the fear of failure. Don't ever fear failure. Stare it in the face, accept it, that the lesson that you take away from it, and then get right back up and do it again. Because you cannot fail when you are working to achieve a goal. You ran out of time? Sure. You didn't anticipate something that was going to get in the way, that was going to cause you to, instead of that straight path to it, you had to zig and zag three times? But stay on the path. Get back to the path. Refine the path. And you will achieve your goals. It may not be in the timeline that we first set out. That's okay. That's not failure. All right? That's life. And if you don't reach your goal, it's okay. Just pick the flag up and set it a little bit further out. All right? Make it scare you. If you look at your goals and you don't have a little fear, a little intrepidation, then they aren't, they aren't big enough. Change them. Go bigger. Go bold. But stay after it. If you stay after it, you'll be able to celebrate your success. What is the M and dumb? The M and dumb is motivational. Motivational, thank you. Dream inspired, unattainable, motivating, motivational, and bold. You know, when you started with the SMARTER acronym, uh -huh. I just heard you talk and I didn't know you were applying as, you know, as an acronym. Okay. Can you just briefly, like one or two words, go over S-M-A-R? Yes. M-M-A-R? S-M-A-R. Okay, okay. Right. The whole thing. Weren't you, weren't you just the whole two thing. words or something. Yeah, I wasn't, the, you, I wasn't, you want me to tell you all about SMARTER? <laughs> no, just I wasn't going with you. I'm playing with you, Lisa. Yes, SMARTER is, uh, the S is specific. Be specific about your goal. M is measurable. Be able to measure your progress. All right. A is actionable. What are the action items that you're going to take? R is realistic. Is it realistic? And that's tied to the time frame, which is the T, the time bound. Is it realistic within the amount of time you are allotting? E is enjoyable. Are you going to enjoy doing this? And R is rewarding. What is the reward that you're going to enjoy? Okay? I mean, I heard everything you were saying, but I didn't know it was. Okay. Other questions? You know, I would love to have a coffee with every one of you. I would love to get off of this COVID thing, and, and I, will, I will meet any one of you. Whistle Stop, Starbucks, Panera's. We'll social distance, or you can meet me at my office at Bridge Space. All right, you have any questions about any of this, or how do you apply this to your business? Because as a business leader, as a business owner, how do we connect our personal goals to our business? Love to have that conversation with you, too. Thank you.